Hi, I'm Professor David Atley, and this is Topics in Astronomy. Thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll be talking about that most controversial of subjects, Pluto, and why astronomers consider Pluto not to be a planet anymore. Our story begins in 2003 with what I've labeled the Eris Crisis. A group of astronomers from Caltech discovered a small body in the outskirts of the solar system, which further observations showed had a mass greater than that of Pluto. Eventually, they settled on a name for the object, calling it Eris. Eris is in a highly eccentric orbit with a very long orbital period of almost 560 years. And Eris is also a group of other, in a group of other very similar objects called uh, transneptunian objects. So the question then becomes, is Eris a planet? Its mass greater than that of Pluto suggests maybe yes, but then if it is, many other objects from that list of transneptunian objects should also be planets. And so if Eris becomes planet number 10, we've also got a couple dozen others at least waiting in the wings. This led to a debate among astronomers about what exactly should be considered a planet. And this discovery also serendipitously happened at the same time that astronomers were beginning to successfully identify and catalog planets in orbit around other star systems in a systematic way for the first time. So we decided that we needed to come up with a single coherent definition for what is and is not a planet so that when we're talking about planets and planet formation, we have a, some idea of what exactly it is we're talking about. During a meeting of the International Astronomical Union in 2006, that's basically like the professional society for astronomers, astronomers came up with a three-pronged test for whether an object is or is not to be considered a planet. The first prong says that the object must orbit a star but not be a star itself. So anything that looks like a planet but is free-floating throughout the galaxy, that's out, as are other stars. So if you have two stars in orbit around one another, neither of them is a planet. The second part of the test says that the object has to have sufficient mass to begin to experience hydrostatic equilibrium. I'll say more about hydrostatic equilibrium in class and maybe in another video, but for now, let's just say it has to have a round or nearly round shape. So it has to be spherical or quasi-spherical, and it can't be kind of lumpy and potato-shaped. And then the final part of the test is that the object must be the dominant gravitational body along its orbit. It has to clear out all kinds of small debris and anything that might be hanging around, and it, say, can't be a moon in orbit around Jupiter. That also doesn't get to be a planet. So what's Pluto and why doesn't it pass this test? Uh, Pluto is a small icy body in the outer solar system that was originally discovered in 1930 by the astronomer Clyde Tombaugh. It was recently visited by the spacecraft New Horizons, which took all of the pictures that you see across the bottom of the slide. On the top left, that's Pluto, and then immediately below it is its largest moon, Charon. Um, Pluto and Charon are actually very similar in size, not, not quite as similar as it looks here, uh, but they are very close to being sort of a double planet. And then New Horizons actually got very close to Pluto and took the image that you see on the right-hand side showing atmospheric hazes and ice mountains. And it turns out, despite the expectations of planetary scientists, that Pluto is actually a quite active world with lots of really interesting ice geology that we're still working to try to understand. New Horizons was actually launched towards Pluto before the controversy over... Eris and the decision about whether or not Pluto should be a planet. Um, so you can imagine the surprise of this poor robotic spacecraft when it got close to Pluto and turned itself back on and checked in with NASA and then 
heard back from NASA and said to itself, what? You sent me all this way and it's not even a planet anymore? Okay, of course I'm kidding, but New Horizons did nevertheless get some really great data as it flew past, past Pluto, and as a consolation prize, it also got to visit a second solar system body that we call Ultima Thule. So it's had a pretty good run. Pluto fails the test because it crosses Neptune's orbit and also because there's a bunch of debris along Pluto's orbit that it has failed to clear out. So it doesn't satisfy that third part of the planet test. Pluto got kicked out of the planet club, but instead it becomes the most famous and prototypical example of a new category of objects that we call dwarf planets. Dwarf planets are large enough to be circularized by their own gravity, so they experience that hydrostatic equilibrium thing that I mentioned, but they don't dominate their orbits. These include Pluto, along with Eris, Makemake, Ceres in the asteroid belt, and then you also see a number of other dwarf planets and dwarf planet candidates depicted across the bottom of the slide. So the sizes and shapes of these are, as far as we can tell, approximately correct. You'll see that some dwarf planets like Pluto and Haumea also have moons. So in this video, we've talked about the three criteria that astronomers consider necessary for an object to be considered a planet. Orbit a star, have hydrostatic equilibrium, so a nearly round shape, and clear out all the minor debris along the planet's orbit. Pluto fails to clear out its orbit, and that's why it went from being the smallest of the planets to the prototypical and most famous of the dwarf planets. And you can argue about whether or not that's a promotion or a demotion or just a lateral transfer, but that's what astronomers consider Pluto to be today. It's the most famous of this dwarf planet category. If you've watched my video on planet formation and the nebular hypothesis, you know that dwarf planets are these interesting leftovers from the formation of the solar system, so they're protoplanets that kind of stuck around and never really became planets. So it's kind of appropriate that Pluto, being a very small and unusual type of object for a planet, fits instead into this much more exotic category. Thanks for watching, and I hope to talk to you again soon for another topic in astronomy.